they did it again. They didn't leave the keys in the ignition. <laughs> <laughs> this is this continually uh, haunts us here. Need the keys. All right, now we got the keys. All right, that's key. That's, that's, <laughs> that is key. That is key. <laughs> you know, you're a wordsmith too. I thought I was the one that was good with words here. I'm the writer. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get some coffee here, Dean. So I want to talk a little bit about your coaching background on this ride. Starting out, well, things really started out in the beginning in Dola, Ohio. Did I pronounce that right? Dola? Well, Dunkirk, Ohio. Yeah, there's Dunkirk. Two, there are two little towns, and they consolidated to have a, a high school between the two of them called Hard Northern. But okay. there's two little towns of less than a thousand people each, uh -huh. and then the school's kind of right in between those two towns. That's what I was, I was doing a little Google search and did a Google image search, and they had like a aerial view from a plane of, of Dola. Yeah. It wasn't I just a very saw a big lot of cornfields. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't a very big view. It's a, it's a Dola probably has 600 people in it. Dola oh, wow. might have 900 to 1,000 or something like that. So, so, so how many kids did you have in your graduating class? My graduating class was, I think, around 65, wow. somewhere around in there. So what, did, what were you thinking when you started out your coaching profession? Were you like, oh, coaching, you know, I'm going to be doing this for over 40 years, what were you thinking at that time? Yeah, I really, be honest with you, I really thought that I would be a high school teacher and a high school coach. That would teaching? be my career. Uh, well, I started out in English, but I really, it's hard to be a football coach and an English teacher, so I ended up being phys ed, because I, <laughs> I requested that and got it when I became the head coach. But that's really what I want to do. My, some of my favorite people growing up, other than my parents, and my family were my coaches and teachers in high school, and they were the ones that influenced me the most in uh, going into education, and uh, I just really thought that's what I'd be, high school coach, high school teacher forever. All right, forever. So so at that time, you just thought, this is as good as it gets. It wasn't like you were right. getting Right, it wasn't like, oh, guys, I want to get to college and I want to get to the NFL or anything like that. I, I, the biggest thing, Ryan, is I've been happy with every job that I've had, right. and it seems like when you kind of go that way, good things happen to you and they lead to other things, lead to other opportunities. I've never really, even when I was a college coach, it wasn't like, well, boy, I really want to get to the NFL. I was happy being a college coach. Right, right. So then you went to Finley, which is also University close to where Finley. You, right. Yeah, I was actually living in Finley while I taught at Elmwood. I didn't okay. even have to move. <laughs> nice. Yep. Nice. And you win, you win a championship your first year, D2. Win a national championship. D2 yeah. national championship. That's not a bad way to start your yeah, career. Yeah, I thought this, is pretty, this college stuff's pretty easy here. <laughs> so then you go from Finley, and this is when you make kind of the, the leap up next. And what, what's next? This is Miami, Ohio. Miami of Ohio. Right. As a defensive coordinator in Miami of Ohio. That's right. With head coach Tim Rose. Uh -huh. And uh, I walk in there, and there's a little defensive back there named John Harbaugh. That's right. That's right. So you got to give us the scoop on this. How good a player was Harbs? John was a really? good player. He, he is a really good player. He's tough, hard nosed, as uh -huh. you would expect, uh, very disciplined. Um, he was, uh, you know, a typical coach's kid in some ways, is that he's very, very football intelligent. He was a good player and fun to coach and uh, really did a great job for us. All right, what can I get you here? Uh, coffee, small coffee with cream. Small coffee with cream. Actually, let's just make that too. This is my second coffee of the day. I'm going to have the jitters here. I may, need to make sure I don't travel off the oh, road now. I'll be good. Not, you know, I really want a donut, but my wife will watch this video. Do you, and, I kind of no, want no, 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 no. <laughs> I can't. I'll can, back up. No, because I can't lie to her because she'll ask me if I had anything else. And I'll, <laughs> I'll have to tell her the truth, so just forget it. <laughs> then you, you kind of connected with Nick Saban, right? I mean, he hired you at Toledo. Right. I left Miami. I went to actually to uh, Naval Academy. Right. Right, and, so that's when you got to and, Maryland. And that's, kind of, yeah, I was down here, and I met a guy named Steve Belichick, Bill's dad, and coached with him. And, and Nick had coached here at one point in time at Navy. Right. And so when Nick got the Toledo head coaching job, he asked me to come back to be his defensive coordinator. I had never met Nick. He did it totally on uh, recommendation of Steve Belichick. Oh, wow. And uh, so he hired me, and I, I went with Nick for at Toledo. So, I mean, that's, you start becoming friends with the Belichick family and Sabins and all that. I mean, those people, they had to have a huge influence on you as a coach. Right. Well, Nick, they, they was, those guys have been, I, I've been just blessed with being around 
you know, Nick and Lou Holtz and Bill Belichick and Gary Pinkle and Tim Rose and, you know, a lot of people may not know Dick Strom, the coach at Finley, but he was just as big as influence. He, I've been around just great, great head coaches. And John, I mean, I don't know anybody that's been around the head coaches I've been around. Hey, I've just been real lucky. Hey, how's it going, man? Good. How are you, sir? Good. How you doing? Good. Good. He, has he ever been here or something? No. Nope. Yeah, how you doing? So I'm doing good. Good. So we're we we going to do it next, good this season, right? We are going to do it great this season. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You got it. Yeah. Good thing you didn't call you out for the donuts, man. No, I know. I know. <laughs> That's great. Now, thank you. Yeah, of course. Of course. So at this point, like, you know, after you were, you were saying that, oh, well, being a high school coach, like, I was cool with that, you know. At this point, you're coaching... You're having a ton of success on the college level. You're coaching with these other great coaches as well. Like, when does it enter your mind, you know, I, I want to be in the NFL? Well, it never really did, uh, Ryan. It, it kind of, what happened was uh, I became the head coach at Kent State. Right. I uh, really felt good about what we had done there. We had turned the program around with guys like Josh Cribbs right. and James Harrison and guys like that. Right. So we kind of had things rolling there. And then uh, out of the blue, I get a call from Bill Belichick saying uh, I'm going to be at the Combine in another week and I just lost my linebacker coach. Would you have any interest in coaching in the NFL? Right. And at that point in time, all of our kids are now out of college or about ready to graduate from college. So I thought, you know, uh, we'll go down and talk to him. And right. I went down and uh, sat down with him and he offered me the linebacker coaching job at New England. And I said, yep, I'll take it. And that was it. All right. And then, two years later, I became the coordinator. Right, two years later, right. But before then, you, you went to Super Bowl, your first year in the NFL. I won, I won my first year in the NFL, well, Super Bowl. I'm going, these first years are really uh, <laughs> good things. And then my first year here as a coordinator, we right. win the Super Bowl. Right. So Then you have you go back to the Super Bowl after that, 2007. It's the undefeated year. Right. And I don't, I don't want to bring up bad memories, but you guys are you guys are winning that game late, and David freaking Tyree happens. You know he played for the Ravens. Well, yeah, I know he did. <laughs> the thing of it is, is that if you really ever watch that whole sequence of that two minute thing though, Ryan, you know, that play is the one that kind of goes down as the play that kind of won the game for him. Right. We dropped three interceptions in that oh. drive. And Asante Samuel, who led the league that year with 12 interceptions, which was phenomenal. Right dropped one right in his hands. Or oh, the game would have been over, we would have taken a knee and won it. Oh. it there were so many things that happened in that drive. Uh, we strip sacked the Manning and the ball popped right back up to him. There was a fourth and one and they got it by three inches. I mean, it was just so many things that happened in that drive. It's just, hey, it was one of those things. The reason that I bring it up is because I still find this really interesting that the, call, the play call that you made at the end of that series you brought the linebacker blitz. Right. And then you come back in your first year as a coordinator with the Ravens. You go to Super Bowl 47. The, the 49ers are on the doorstep. They're knocking. It's fourth down. And you dial up what play? Same blitz. Same exact blitz. <laughs> that, yeah, pretty that much takes the same some blitz. cojones. Well, the thing of it is the blitz would have worked in the other game, too. We, we didn't execute it. Uh, we knew that we were going to have a guy free. He hesitated and didn't go, and that was the reason Manning got the ball off. And we really felt like, if you really watch the play, that the last play of the Super Bowl in the San Francisco game, you know, Jimmy did a great job of coverage out there, but the guy that really made that play was Danella Elorby right. pressuring Kaepernick. I mean, he's throwing off his back foot and it's a bad throw. Right. So, it, you know, a lot of it goes down to the coverage, but th we had that exact same blitz. We would have had the same guy free in that Giants game, but he hesitated and he didn't go. Right. And therefore, that's why it didn't work. It, it wasn't, it was a bad blitz and it wasn't, right. it, it was a good blitz. It just, uh, so we gave it a second shot. And it <laughs> I worked. Love it. I mean, I feel like people with Super Bowl 47, like, you know, everybody remembers the, the lights going out and you know, the Ravens getting off to a big lead and then the comeback and all that stuff. And I, and I just feel like what sometimes gets lost is, I mean, that's one of the best goal line stands in football history. I mean, it's one of the biggest. Well, what was really, to me, great about it was, that, you know, Ray, Ray was in the other day and he and I were talking. And I said, you know, could you have written ever a better story 
for a Pro Bowl linebacker with your career to go out in a in particular game, that'd be your last game. Right. So many guys stick around and they, you know, maybe don't play as well at the end of their career, and that's what people remember. For Ray Lewis to go out his last game ever on a goal line stand to win the Super Bowl, I mean, that's what you write a movie about. I know, I mean, it's seriously. perfect. It's perfect. Did you, did you and him ever, like when you were coming up with the game plan, I mean, how much were you talking to Ray and being like, what do you think about this? Or was he a guy that just like, yeah, I'll take the game plan, I'll learn it front to back. You know, what was it like? No, I'll tell you what I did. Every Wednesday morning, we, I had a meeting in the morning before I ever met with the defense. We put the game plan together as a coaching staff. And can you imagine having this meeting? I would have a meeting in my office, and it would be Ray, Ed Reed, <laughs> Suggs, uh -huh. and Haloti Nada. Those four guys would be sitting at the table, and I would present them the game plan and say, what do you think? Right. And 99% of the time, they go, yeah, good, good, coach, like it, like it. Right. One time in one game did they say, I, had, I was going to pressure quite a bit, and they, they all looked at me, and I could tell something was up. I go, okay, what's up? What's, what's with you guys? <laughs> Why? Well, I, yeah, I know I can tell right now you, 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 there's something about this. They go, oh, coach, we can beat them with a four-man rush and just play coverage. And I said, look, if Ray, Ed, Haloti, and Suggs think that that's what we can do, that's what we, that's what we did. So and wait, I, and, Suggs wasn't calling for more blitzes? I feel like Suggs, no, you know. No, I'm telling you what, they felt like, we were playing Peyton Manning in Denver in the playoffs. Right. And they felt like we could beat him with a four-man rush and not pressure him as much right. and, and play coverage. And that's what we did. And we won. That's we played great. great, too, on defense that day. So, but 90% of the time, they just sit there and go, yeah, coach, we like it. It's good. Right. And uh, they were great. That was such a great meeting. And I still do it to this day, just not with the same four guys. I usually pick four guys every year. and. We sit in there and have that meeting. Nice. You know, you talk about blitzing and all that stuff. How much do you love just like getting after it? You know, I mean, like... I blitz every down. We can blitz every <laughs> down. <laughs> What's it been like now coaching with John? I mean, it's been great. I, I just this organization, from Steve Bashotti to Ozzy to John. I uh, mean, I I don't know how you get any better at this. Love working for the guys I work for. Love working for the guys I'm working with. And uh, I mean, I, this is as good as it gets. Who are some of the guys that you feel like, I mean, I know you, it's, it's hard to single out, but like some of the guys that you feel like 20 years from now, you'll still be really close friends with, you know? Oh, J Jared Johnson. Yeah. Uh, Ray, Ray will always be one. Ed will be one. Yeah. Um, T says will be one. I, I think Weddle's going to be one. Yeah. You know, I just I think I just feel like I got a real special bond with him right now. But you know, there's so many of them. I mean, I still get calls from guys that I coached 25, 30 years ago, and uh, that's great. And my wife does too. So it, it's I mean, I still get calls from Harrison, and I've coached against really? him for a lot of years. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, this has been great, Dean. Oh, thanks, Ryan. Thank Appreciate you, buddy. It. And you know what? Next time, next time I'll remember the keys. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be good. That'd be good. <laughs>